Should you quit your job and follow the resignation trend? I'm gonna be straightforward and the answer is I don't know. The gist of this video is to show you what could be those reasons and factors that can go into the decision making and help you make up your mind and give you more food for thought. Hey guys, my name is Mansuk and welcome to my channel. Business as usual, thank you guys for pressing the like button if you enjoy watching my videos. And in exchange, I'm hoping that the Titan Goddess Métis blesses your search for the answer that will be right for you. So blessing said, now let's get back to the business. Do you want to quit your job because you want to work for yourself? If you do, then why? Is it because you are not happy with your job? If you are not why and so on. We can apply five wise approach to uncover the true reasons that underlie your wish to quit the job. And I was researching this question a lot in the past when I was at the crossroads of whether to continue my career in the corporate world or try something bold that I've never done in my life before and being the crusader in the family who take this path first. So why is it so hard to decide what to do? People are different. Not all people are made equal, unfortunately, and they fantasize about working for themselves, free from the corporate nuisance. But when they get into it, they are not ready for this. And this is not what they expected or hoped for. But this is not an excuse to give up and go back to the old terms either. And for me, it's a matter of keep trying until you succeed. Another big question here is that should people massively quit corporate jobs? There is a big problem that I see about the idea of quitting massively corporate jobs, the reality is that people who work corporate jobs don't share their happiness and satisfaction that they get from it. On the opposite, the internet is flooded with negative statements that people hate their jobs and that is fine too to share about what bothers you, but there's just no balance. There is a perception that all corporate jobs are bad. Not all corporate jobs are bad. Not all companies are created equal and this is a good thing to have. And perhaps you just happen to work for a crappy employer with uh, with substandard conditions and that treat you like, you know, uh, dispensable material as opposed to an asset. It happens and it happens a lot to a lot of people and myself included. So you could chalk it up to the experience of working for a bad employer and the chances are you will find a better company if you're really sick for it. Speaking of underlying reasons for quitting and embarking on the self-employed journey, let's examine the first factor which is time. So most of the time if you, ha if you have a job, it's a 9 to 5 job and outside your working hours you have leisure. And this is what is great about being employed, in most cases you start at 9 in the morning and you finish at 5 in the evening and from 5 to 9 ish you are free you have the freedom at least the temporal freedom or you have a vacation it's paid and you turn off from your work and you're lying on the beach and soaking up the sun and not bothered by anything else even if your employer accidentally burns down in flames before you return and people who complain about working a corporate job don't realize what a great feeling it is to have the freedom to isolate yourself from the work hustle but do you know what else is great about having a job compared to being self-employed it's stability with stability you have a steady job the expectations and responsibilities for the work you carry out are there and it might be boring but the job is nevertheless steady and you don't have drastic fluctuations in volumes of work and the amount of time you spend at work you have a good job it's paid it's steady and what else do you ask for? And speaking of steady income, it's also a big factor when it comes to the debate around jumping on the self-employed bandwagon. You have a salary, if it pays well, it's even better. The benefit of having a salary as an employee is apart from it being steady, is actually it's steady and the paychecks are scheduled and you know you receive the payment every two weeks on Friday and it does help you make your plans uh, that involve your spendings, your savings and earnings such as through investments. And if you have a high salary then parting ways with it in favor of starting a business or freelance job would be a tough decision to make. And that is why so many people stumble upon life hurdles. Unless you are passionate about the company, uh, which I think is rare 
these days. You do your job within the box of responsibilities you initially signed up for when you took it. And sometimes you want to move mountains, you want to be the best employee or make an impression to get the promotion and recognition, but most employees do their job no more than what is asked for them. Of course, there are layers to responsibility element because jobs and roles are different from plain clerks to CEOs and the range of obligations can be pretty long and wide. Long story short, in the corporate world that you are part of, the advantage you have is your range of responsibilities. And trust me, it's a lot shorter than if you were self-employed. As an employed person, you have to pay taxes. Well, you have to pay taxes in either way, but if you have a job, you don't have to do taxes all by yourself. So that headache is passed over to your company. And also if your employer has a contribution matching program, this could be a huge perk and something you wouldn't see if you work for yourself. And I'm not sure if it's going to be a deal breaker, but it's a huge nice to have at least for me. Factor number six is effort. The amount of effort, time and energy it takes to get a job with a decent salary would be less than if you were to start a business. So what I mean here is that to find a job is not easy. To find a good paying job is even more daunting, but once you land the job, you will have a salary from day one. Starting a business or freelance is very demanding. It takes time and a lot of time, a lot of efforts to make any profit. You're not guaranteed to make any profit, especially if you have incurred any cost at the beginning of your self-employed venture. Okay, what are the big no-nos of keeping a job? So for me, a big no holding to a corporate job is that you have an income Income ceiling. When you work for someone else, you don't decide how much you are going to earn. You can negotiate, but you cannot raise your salary or think of a random number off the top of your head during the interview process. The wages and income levels are dictated by many factors, such as industry, location, skill set, experience, and subjective job market factors. And if you like to significantly increase your salary, you may want to switch industries or change your occupation which is sometimes a big sacrifice to make and there is no guarantee the move will pay off. And the next big no of keeping to nine to five is a big chance of getting lucky to work for a pesky job and depend on them, especially when it comes to job promotions. And this is a huge disadvantage to me personally, and it will be even higher than having a, a salary ceiling. The downside of a corporate job is your vile boss or your rigid hierarchy, where you have to put up with all the nonsense, nod your head in agreement. If not, you will likely be shown the door. Don't get me wrong, some great bosses can inspire you to do great things and become great mentors, but there is nothing worse than working for a great company and reporting to a bad boss. And as they say, people don't quit companies, they quit managers. The next big no of keeping to a nine to five job is passion. I'm pretty sure most jobs that we have or had in the past don't evoke passion and excitement. It doesn't necessarily mean that we hate our jobs. It just means we have jobs that pay us enough not to hate them. It's not always the case though. Many people hate their jobs even if they're paid well, not because of their job or company. It's because of the very job itself. They might have chosen it a long time ago when they were in college studying for their degree. And a lot of time people don't see their job as their passion. They're doing it for money. When you're not passionate about something, you spend at least 40 hours per week. It's an elephant in the room that you can't ignore. Okay, now the fun part of the video. I'm going to share my yes and no's of being self-employed. The big advantage of being self-employed is income potential. Working for yourself and being your own boss is a great undertaking and a remarkable feeling. When you entertain the idea of becoming self-employed, many benefits spring to your mind and the most obvious one is income or the size of it. And of course, it depends on the type of business you run and freelance job you do, but the opportunities of how much you earn are boundless. 
It's limitless and it grows with your social proof and your mastery exponentially. The smarter you work, the more money you're likely to make. However, there are a few caveats. Number one, you have to spend first by incurring costs that will help you launch your business and provide access to the platform to sell your products or services. Number two, you don't make money right away because you need to break even and it takes time to build your brand, collect reviews and be on everybody's shopping list. Not to mention, you need to make sure that Google algorithms fall in love with you or your business. Number three, you may not make money at all. It's very simple, you may fail. But the competition is fierce, you survive or thrive if you put in many endless hours of work to stand a chance and succeeding. Just look at YouTube channels and you will see the correlation between being persistent, investing your time and energy, trying to create something a quality, and you may be successful in the long run. Not viral YouTubers that get lucky once. The thing with earnings when you are self-employed versus when you are employed is that if you picture an XY axis where X would be elapsed time and Y would be an income level and the straight line on the X axis with a small jump across the time would be your salary. Whereas the straight line at zero of the X axis turning at some point into an upward curve on X axis would be the self-employed income. And I know it sounds complicated while I'm describing it, but if you imagine it, it's really simple. This is something I keep in mind constantly. The bottom line is that you need patience and smartness and a lot of dedication to work to get to the point that take you straight income line up. And that is at the expense of giving up your steady salary for a certain time. The next big thing is flexibility. With self-employment comes flexibility in your work schedule. You don't obey the company's established work schedule. You can set your own schedule and work wherever and whenever you like. If you are sick, there is actually no need to ask for permission to recover within 10 days, considering that there are 365 days uh, per year. The flip side of flexibility is that you may romanticize and visualize yourself working for hours a day, taking limitless vacations and doing your hobbies, but it's not how it works. And ever since I quit my job, my workload and the amount of time that I spend working has increased two or three times as much as when I had a corporate job. When you hear people saying, I want to quit my job because I want to have more freedom, this doesn't in any way refer to the working less. So when you are self-employed, you can have flexibility and freedom to choose a schedule and skip parts of the day to do some chores, but be prepared to work like a horse at least in the beginning. And when you have no clue where you're heading to, you got to figure out everything yourself. There will be no smart boss who's supposed to help you out. You do it yourself and in most cases you just Google everything. So in my experience as an entrepreneur, I have come to realize that your best resource is your time. If you believe you can delegate some tasks that can help you focus on other things, business critical and more strategic parts of your work, then don't spend your time on those tasks, especially if you are not good at it. Pay the person who can do it better and faster and collab with them. Hey Shiva, thank you so much for helping out with my videos, by the way. You're very awesome and I want to say thank you. And I'm so thankful there are freelance platforms like Fiverr, Upwork and Pay Per Hour because the smartest thing that you can do for your business is actually remove yourself from doing the work you have no talents in. And with that said, thank you guys so much for checking out the video and I wish you good luck in everything that you want from your professional life. Make sure you hit the like like button, subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.